There's one more part of a pool system we'd like to address that can affect the resistance to water flow, and that's the heater. Then we'll touch briefly on lighting. We usually only think of pool heaters in terms of their thermal efficiency and the energy costs for operating them. Residential pools are usually not heated very many hours of the year due to the high associated energy cost. But an often overlooked opportunity to improve a pool's efficiency is the heater's hydraulic efficiency. Since heaters are normally installed permanently into the pool circulation system, they add, as with the other components we've discussed, continuous resistance to water flow, whether they are heating or not. And depending on the type of heater, this resistance can be substantial. So what options do you have for heating a pool without increasing resistance to water flow? One manufacturer offers a heater with a built-in bypass valve, which reduces resistance to nearly zero when the heater is off, allowing you to improve pumping efficiency by reducing a variable speed pump's speed and power demand. And there are other similar no or low resistance heaters. Let's look at the various types of pool heating. Gas heaters are the most popular choice for heating a pool in California. There are essentially two efficiency choices, standard efficiency and high efficiency, or fully condensing. Fully condensing heaters are about 10 to 15 percent more efficient than standard gas heaters. And though they are more expensive to purchase, they are much more cost effective when heating a pool year round. An alternative to the gas heater is the electric heat pump heater. This type is popular in moderate, humid climates such as Florida, but less so in California. But while heat pumps are generally considered more energy efficient than gas heaters, they can be much more expensive to operate, depending on climate and the relative energy cost to heat using electricity or gas. Heat pump heaters also have lower capacity ratings than gas heaters, which means that it takes them longer to heat pool water to the desired temperature. If you don't want to pay for gas or electricity to heat the pool, you can go with solar heating, which is efficient at heating water and effective in extending the swimming season into the spring and fall. It is not useful in the cold and dark of winter since it relies on the sun to heat the pool water. But while you're not paying an energy bill for solar heating, you can pay a price in terms of pumping efficiency. Solar collectors vary in this regard, with some presenting substantial resistance to water flow and requiring high pump power and energy, while others offer low resistance and the opportunity for variable speed pumps to reduce speed, horsepower, and energy use. Solar thermal systems should be set up and checked so that valves that control the lifting and falling of water are correctly functioning and pumping energy is minimized. If you are heating your pool with electricity or gas, a pool cover is critical to prevent the heat from escaping. A pool cover significantly reduces this heat loss. In fact, in many California climates, a pool cover may be all it takes to meet all summertime pool heating needs. These covers are very economical and help keep your pool warm without additional pumping energy. Pool covers can also help keep debris and dirt out of your pool and reduce evaporation, which saves a significant amount of water. Last but not least, if you have a pool light, consider switching to an LED. Just like LED light bulbs save you money in your house, they will also save you money in your pool. And, as a bonus, they often come in an array of fun colors. Take a minute to answer a few questions and check your understanding of key points, then we'll move on to the module summary.